Dirk Hartog. So for anybody that doesn't know, Dirk Hartog Island is in the Shark Bay Heritage Area off the coast of Western Australia. Um, you can access the island by boat or by charter plane. So obviously we took the Hartog Explorer barge across to the island. Now the barge collects you from Shelter Bay and you must pre-book it well in advance. Um, it is quite pricey. We paid $830 return with the trailer because trailers are actually extra. But it's such an incredible experience. We would absolutely highly recommend it. How's the gym? <laughs> We're rushing to the homestead because they serve coffee until 10 a.m. It's 9.47. Hi. <laughs> oh, hi, how are you going guys? Warren here from the Little Adventurers, just enjoying a little <laughs> bit of a spot of coffee here on Dirk Hartog Island. Check out the view. <laughs> <Dickhead>. <laughs> <laughs> So now we're headed over to check out our campsite at Notch Point. This one cost us $80 for two nights to camp here. It is around a 40 minute drive from the homestead. The track itself, it's pretty good. It's hard sand all the way in. Some corrugations to navigate, but all in all, it's pretty easy. Happy with your camp choice? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's really good. Okie dokie, so we just uh, left our little campsite, which we'll probably give you a look at in a little while, um, and rolled up to this amazing secluded beach here. Check this out. It's absolutely stunning. Um, so yeah, the, the, the situation is that, uh, we are camped at Notch Point, which is just over the other side of this big rocky embankment. So it's on the other side. Um, and yeah, it's reasonably protected from the wind, but the beach area is sort of not. So we came for a walk. We walked all the way around the point here and we found, um, this little beach, uh, which I don't believe you can, you're not allowed to camp here. You can't camp here, but you can come here and spend the day because um, Notch Point campsite's just behind us. So yeah, so we came here and the water is uh, beautiful and calm. So check that out. It's amazing. There's a little bit of reef here just out the back. Um, probably good enough for me to go for a shore dive and I can, I can swim out there. Uh, we brought the kayak along. I think Em's pretty keen. She might get the kayak out. The wind is really low here. So I feel like kayaking this bay would be would be pretty good. And yeah, we're just gonna have a, a, a chill out here for the afternoon and we'll head back to camp later. So yeah, good spot, eh? Oh, you got, a, you got a ball. What is it with finding balls on random beaches? Yeah, you just, oh yeah, you found a I golf found ball. I found a golf ball on the other one and this one here. That's like brand new, it looks pretty new, hey? Uh, I don't know. You know what that looks like? Oh, you know what that reminds me of? Yeah. I don't know if you, I don't know if you ever played it when you were a kid. Have you, did you guys ever play grip ball? Where yeah. you had the grip pads? That's a ball off a grip pad for sure, 100%. Yeah. Anyway, I have a question. Pass me the ball, huh? Okay. There are so many of these things along the shore. What are they? Can anyone tell us? They don't seem to be jellyfish. But there's so many of them, they're all along here. Maybe sea slugs? Don't know. Um, yeah, let us know. But for now, we're gonna have a bit of a chill and yeah, we'll chat to you later.
Okay, how you going guys? So we just um, have a little update. We have done bugger all today, <laughs> which is uh, which is odd for us because we're usually on the go a lot, but um, we've just honestly just had a, a really relaxing afternoon here, uh, not doing an incredible amount. Um, I went for an extremely short and uneventful spearfish that um, equated in absolutely nothing at all. Uh, visibility was disgusting. I could see about a meter in front of me. Um, so that was shocking. Uh, I did take kayak out for a bit of a scope. Um, just scoped out some of the, the areas at the back of this bay and around and yeah, I had a go at those and absolutely nothing. So yeah, completely uneventful. And the same thing here, we're actually doing some fishing. There's M on the beach. Um, and we're still set up here But yeah, nothing. There's definitely some bites going on, but we're not getting anything um, And we sort of don't really care. Uh, we're just happy to have a lazy afternoon. I guess so Here we are. We'll just keep on having a crack at fishing Have a couple of beers and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll probably head back to camp in a little while and and actually set camp up Because we haven't really done that either. So yeah nice for a chill So I feel like we should explain what just happened there because we got so excited that we saw something out in the water and we just cut you all off. So when we were on the boat on the way over here, the guy, the, the guy on the boat said that last week there was a pod of orcas out here and we saw heaps of splashing out there. So I was like, oh my God, we need to send the drone out. It might be orcas, which are my favorite animal, by the way. Anyway, it wasn't orcas. However, we'll show you what we saw. <laughs> morning um we're currently at louisa bay it's a little bit windy um and it's probably what's worse is it's really choppy um yeah oh, the swell's not crazy but it's pretty chopped up and the visibility in the water looks absolutely shocking so there'll be no snorkeling or anything for us but that's all good um so we are on our way this morning up to cape in uh inscription which is I think about another 40 ish k's from where we are now yeah. and we're about it's gonna take us a while yeah it's gonna take us a while yeah. we're about 20 k's from camp and uh it going is quite slow it's corrugated and rocky but um all good it's pretty interesting so far and um yeah like it is still absolutely beautiful like this is uh, this would be an absolutely yeah. stunning place to camp yeah, you can camp just up there or yeah you, or there's it looks even like there's plenty of there. spots to camp here but yeah it's um it's windy yeah uh but it is what it is mm. that's all good it's still oh it's still stunning like we've got 
clear blue skies, had amazing stars last night as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's absolutely stunning, even though it's windy. So mm -hmm. we're just gonna make the day of it to go up and, and do some exploring, because really we kind of came over here set up for like lots of water activities, spearing, kayaking we bought the sup board with us <laughs> and like, there's and, no sup board yeah there's you ain't <laughs> gonna do not. any of that right now it, it's no. blow, it's blowing pretty hard yeah. uh, last night it dropped off it so. did a little bit yeah and this morning it dropped a little bit it dropped a bit last night um, this morning which made last night really quite nice and yeah. and actually made actually made it quite bearable at camp it was it not so cold yeah but it's definitely picked up today so maybe as we keep going further up there might be a couple of bays that are sheltered and we mm. might get a quick snorkel in so yeah anyway Anyway, fingers crossed. WA, windy always. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Emma's just opening up the gate. It's a fauna management fence they use to uh, keep out any sort of, uh, you know, wild cats, wild dogs. Hello. <laughs> So yeah, they have uh, these gates plotted around. Um, they split the island in a couple, I think in two, to get rid of some of the wild pests um, that they had. So yeah, it just keeps, keeps everything else healthy. Make sure you close the gates behind you. Um, it's a big bloody fence. It's a big fence. Uh, we've been driving for about, or just over an hour now, and we haven't gone very far. So we've probably gone about, I think all up, probably about 20 K. Yeah, about 20 kilometers. Um, and we've probably last five kilometers, been fairly heavily corrugated, so the speed's dropped even further. But I think, um, yeah, it seems to have smoothed out a touch now. It's a little bit better, but. Yeah, definitely really slow going around the island. So but our goal is to get up to Cape Inscription um, by lunch. So I think we'll do that. And then yeah, next, and then the second goal is try and find a place where we can have a snorkel and a spear. So fingers crossed the wind allows for it. We're doing like 30 k's an hour. <laughs> Give that. First car, right up ahead. <laughs> it's a car. <laughs> it's a car. Just saying, um, we were just saying earlier, like that's the first car we've seen for a couple of days, and it's crazy because the island's actually quite big, and it's really easy to see, like really easy to feel like you're just on it on your own. Um, which is hectic, hey? So, yeah, anyway, yeah, it's just wacky. It's yeah. just absolutely wacky. So here's the uh, replica dish, this little thing, of uh, Dirk Hartog's pewter dish that he left behind when he first got here in 1616. Uh, 1616, 400 years ago. That is just mental, man. Um, and yeah, and then some other bloke, Wilhelm de Fleming, he took it down 
um, and took it back to the Dutch authorities in, uh, in Batavia. Um, and it was originally sent back to the archives of the United East India Company. So there you go. Um, but yeah, 1616, man, how hectic is that? That's just crazy. And this coastline is just mental. Look at this. Just a few moments ago, a little bit hard. It won't, you won't be able to see them on, our, on any of our footage, but we had, a, we had four whales just go past the tip of the island here. Um, we were able to see them in the binoculars, so that was really cool. Um, there is an amazing reef down here, just down this cliff face, but I have no idea how I'd get down there and access it. Uh, it is a little bit choppy down in there too, so who knows, might figure it out in a minute, but we'll see how we go. Right, so here's the lighthouse, um, operational uh, 1910 and then uh, automated in 1917. So there's that, the quarters have just been, uh, the quarters are just up there and they were, they were rebuilt because um, they were stripped and salvaged. But uh, that was all rebuilt in 2005. So yeah, pretty cool. They still use it um, to, for as a base of operations to like manage the, um, the loggerhead turtle nesting seasons as well. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, just really cool old lighthouse. Nuts to think that, um, yeah, they, they came and posted themselves out here. Yeah, and, that, and they did that for six or seven years, so crazy. Oh, Warren's a bit unhappy. He can't get down there for a spearfish where this is the place he really thought that he could. But we're going to try the beach a little bit further along where the campsite is. So we'll show you as we go. What'd you get? It looks like a dart. Um, so, Ooh. yeah. Woohoo! Woohoo! Hey. I'll go and get the bucket. Okay. Oh, I got a fish! Woohoo! <laughs> I, just set up the camera. I like to catch the fish, but I don't like to touch the fish. I'm a little bit precious. <laughs> <laughs> These guys have just become friends. Now we've got two fish, but not quite enough for dinner yet, so keep going. Good <laughs> work, buddy. Yay! There you go. Nice. Old prep. Little tiny feed. Little entree. It's the fun, fun part, isn't it? Yeah. Just have a bit of fun with it. Good morning everybody. Um, on our last morning at Notch Point, um, we are headed to the homestead for our last night, mainly because of the distances that you need to travel on the island. We figured we camp at the homestead on the last night, it's not too far to drive to the barge in the morning. Um, so that's what we're plan the plan is. And it's worked out really well because uh, we woke up this morning and the wind had just picked up a lot more than yesterday. So it's probably been about, I think it's been about 17 or 18 knots, maximum 20 knots most days. It's definitely picked up to about 24, 25 this morning and we felt it. Um, it was kind of not enjoyable to sort of sit around at camp. So we thought, let's just pack it up and head down to the homestead. We're going to drop the trailer off at the homestead and then we're going to take the car for a drive over the dune system over the blowholes. So apparently that's really, really cool um, to go see. So yeah, we're kind of just making the most of the windy day um, by just going and doing some sightseeing. Um, I've been carrying quite a bit of fuel because I thought that I'd need it and I haven't. 
So I'm gonna dump in, um, I'm just gonna dump in 20 liters and that way there'll be no fuel left on the roof. I've got another 40 liters on the, on the trailer as well. So, but we probably will need a little bit of it um, just heading out from Steep Point. So, cause we've still got to drive from Steep Point to Denham, which is still another sort of uh, three and a half hours, I think, three and a half, four hours, I think to Denham. So yeah. But anyway, we've had a really nice time here at Notch Point. The wind was um, uh, up, but it uh, allowed us to do a few things, which was good, but we're sort of glad that it kicked off today because that's given us an excuse to get out of here early and, and um, go see the homestead. So we'll keep you posted along the way. Next sticker to add to the uh, adventure board. Dirkartog Island. Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> cool. It's a storyboard, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a few now. Guys, this is Salty's camp at the homestead. Uh, in Dirkartog Island. Uh, you, we're, we've been really lucky, there's actually only three of the sites booked, everything else is free. So the guy where you check in at the bar cafe, um, he said we could just pick our spot. So this is the one we've picked. And bonus, we didn't realize you can actually have fires here. Uh, you have to buy the firewood on the um, from the office because you can't actually bring your own firewood over to the island for biosecurity um, reasons. But, uh, yeah, check it out. So this is the view from the camp kitchen. Um, but this is the camp kitchen. So you've got, they provide you with clean drinking water. And then there's a, a, a few cooking facilities, washing up facilities. So it's pretty good. Yeah, we just cook breakfast in here. Um, washed our dishes and yeah just takes that edge off and um, from being out in bush the whole time so yeah this is pretty good camp kitchen then in terms of um, like showers and toilets you've got two of them here little ensuite facility so yeah, it's cool. It's a good place to stop. We're pretty pumped up. So we, we came out to the blowholes this morning um, on quite a few people's recommendation. Um, it's windy as hell, so we've got to do something. Yeah. And so we drove out here, had some like a little bit of dune driving, which was like, I don't know, like two minutes of dune driving. That was fun. Um, but then we come up to the cliff here. We saw four whales out in the ocean. And so we sat there watching them for a couple of minutes. And then Emma just looked down in front of the cliff and there was a, a, a huge humpback with a calf, um, huge mama humpback with a calf. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. So I sprinted over the rocks. <laughs> oh God, I, I'm so glad I didn't roll an ankle. So I sprinted <laughs> over the rocks. I came back here, I grabbed the dr drone and luckily we had like a, uh, like a f almost a full battery um, in, the, in the yeah. case. So I threw it in and I flew it over the cliff and I've just got like some amazing footage of um, a mama humpback and her calf just cruising along the um, along cliff face. So we're gonna show you that right now, but oh my God, wow, pumped up. Wow, what an experience. Yeah, check this out.
was surface point uh, was a pretty cool spot not far away from the homestead either and a pretty easy four-wheel drive out there so um, we just got back to the homestead and um, we sort of set up at camp a little bit and um, Warren's gone out for a, uh, a swim out here somewhere um, I've actually found a spot that is warm I've been able to put on a pair of shorts for the first time for the trip um, and I'm just soaking up some sun and reading my book so yeah it's going to be a pretty chill afternoon um, but we'll uh, yeah we'll show you what we do along the way yeah these are the people from the tour what are we doing here mate? crumbing our fish that we caught <laughs> There we go, I'm doing a little panko crumb on the fish that we got at, uh, at Withnall Point last night. Did a little crumb up on them and we're going to throw them in some fish tacos, so yum yum! Oh yeah! Look at that. Oh yeah. So uh, we just did up our fish tacos, going to have a little arvo snack and then head to the bar for a drink. Ooh. everybody well we've just packed up left the homestead uh, nice hot shower this morning I got to wash my hair yay and <laughs> um, we were just saying though if we were to come back to the island we would probably base ourselves at the homestead and um, just because you don't need to bring as much uh, so we wouldn't even need to bring the trailer there's hot water there for showers obviously and um, there's fresh drinking water there uh, the other thing is 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 you can have fires there where you can't have fires anywhere else on the island um, and there were points where we were really cold and we just really wanted a fire um, the weather you know it didn't it wasn't quite what we expected we didn't really get in the water that much um, but still we had an amazing time um, the homestead is pretty cool we got you've got a bar there you've got the cafe um, last night we sat around the fire with a group of other people that we, we met on the way over here and um, had a few drinks and um, there's a communal fire pit as well so that was really fun wasn't it? it was really nice. Yeah we had a good night um, 
and yeah we are headed back to the barge now Warren was just saying he wishes that we had a board <laughs> <laughs> I think um yeah like my first forays into uh spear fishing have been um you know from the shore and it's actually quite shallow here well i mean look like the places that we went i mean there might there might be other places on the island that are deeper but mostly where we went it was really shallow i found that, um even walking out 60 70 meters i was um still around knee height at, in, in a lot of places so it was very difficult to get in for a, a spearfish. Um, the wind had made it really, really poor with visibility. Um, the one day that I did get in, I didn't see more than a metre in front of me, which was not great. Um, and the only really, ex well, the only accessible reef that we saw off the shore was at Turtle Bay. And again, that day it was super windy and yeah. a bit swelly, so not the best day to jump in for a shore dive. Um, so I think, yeah, I think, I think it's sort of sealed my fate. We're probably going to maybe squeeze at a boat over the next like six months. Because I think if you had a boat here, some of the little outer reefs, um, you know, you're going to get five, six meters of depth, which is a lot better for me for spear fishing. Um, and it'd be nice to, you know, get even, you know, get even deeper. Ten meters would be nice. So. Yeah, so it'd be, I think it'd be really awesome if you had a boat, you'd probably have much better access to fishing, much better access to spear fishing and reef um, diving. So, but I think, you know, it doesn't take away from uh, how amazing it was. Um, yeah, the island was incredible, really picturesque, rugged, um, yeah. felt quite wild, felt remote. Uh, except for last night when we were having hot showers and drinks at the bar, but the rest of the island felt really wild and remote. Yeah. And yeah, we will 100% be back. But I, as Em said, I think we'll come back with a refined setup for the island, so that we're not dragging the trailer everywhere around the island. Um, yeah. And I think that would be heaps better if we had a, a, a maybe a lighter setup for the for the island. And like you said, base of the homestead. Base of the homestead. Yeah, and just take the tricks out. Yep. I mean, it is quite a weird at the top of the island, um, but there were a few little bears that we didn't get to see because we sort of ran out of time as well. So and it's and it's um you know it's it's July yeah. you know and it's cold yeah so like you know I was in a five mil wetsuit jumping into the ocean and that's fine but I I swam in the ocean yesterday and pretty much everybody that saw me swimming said like oh is it cold and i'm like yeah it's damn cold <laughs> yeah. um so yeah you know the wind makes it colder but the yeah. water temp is really cold at the moment so yeah july might not be the best like time of the year for yeah. for like water-based activities with the wind and cold but yeah. you know i think if you came at a warmer time of year um man i think oh it'd just be god it'd be so good so yeah, yeah. we didn't really pack for all of this cold weather either yeah. like we brought three jumpers for the whole time yeah. um three pairs of pants <laughs> i think it was i think we i think we knew what we'd be we'd be expecting but i think we just thought oh let's just hope that yeah. the wind's going to go down let's just hope that it'll be warm <laughs> but we bloody knew what was going to happen I know. but you can only go with a hopeful spirit i guess exactly so. but look it's still been amazing i don't know anyone every youtube we've watched it's been windy so i don't think it doesn't matter what time of year you come i think you're going to get wind yeah. um but yeah it's been cool it's been we awesome. are yeah we're headed back to the barge now which will show you fingers crossed no issues getting on or off um but we'll keep you updated with that side of things so see you soon